Hey, how you doing? This is uh, my name is Jim Biggins with 94.5 The Moose, uh, part of the Alpha Media Broadcast Group. Every one of us right now would probably much rather be exactly where Dan Pohl is sitting right now with Marissa than wherever it is we are at this moment. <laughs> and that would be at the pole cat. Boy, those are beautiful colors behind you. I'll bet it's yeah, gorgeous up there right now. Golf course is really showing the autumn colors. Uh, we're, we're on the 18th hole here, just down on the, the deck, the veranda, looking down on the 18th. And, you know, with if folks, if you get a good day to play, uh, you got to come out here because some of the holes on the backside, especially five and seven and eight, some through the woods are just spectacular right now. So, you know, if the weather turns, you know, decent, come on out. We do have a lot of play this morning. So oh, we got some guys here now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had a couple eight. of good days this week. And <laughs> yeah, they can go away at any time. moment. You know, yeah. I don't feel nearly as bad taking extra strokes on a day like this because it keeps me out there that much longer. That's my excuse anyway. So. Well, that's, that's a good lie you've thrown out there, Jim. I know because everybody wants to cut, you know, they want to cut the strokes back as much as they can, but yeah. it is a gorgeous day for sure. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, the pull cat, obviously uh, designed by you, Dan Pohl, you know, uh, in Michigan, you're, you're golf royalty. Okay. And anybody oh, well, who's played, that. played golf in Michigan is, is aware of your, your PGA days. Um, that you designed the pole cat, your your PGA wins. Uh, you know, if, if, if you're in, in my age group, I remember the Masters tournament in, in 82. I mean, unbelievable memories and uh, and accomplishments that, that most of us well, Jim, I, do, I appreciate that. Pardon? Uh, you know, well, I appreciate uh, that. And like, oh, say, well, it's a uh, it's a uh, it, it, it's a wonderful thing. And you've made your whole life about golf, which is great because we're in, we're in a we're in a great golf state. And uh, for people who haven't been to the Polecat, when you were first designing this this course, I mean, what were you thinking? What were you thinking about uh, putting this course? Who were you who were you building it for? What were you thinking? Well, that's a good question because you know, having played the tour, we got such a good look at variety of courses across the country. And really it, talking to other designers, Nicholas, Weiskopf, guys like that. You, you really let the, the land and the layout uh, of the land dictate, uh, you know, some whole, you know, some of the path of your holes. Now, here you had a couple of obstacles, the Chippewa River running through mm -hmm. the wetlands that run specifically through the property forced me to not be able to bring the ninth hole back to the clubhouse and have the 10th tee ninth hole combination together. Right. Uh, in, in, in retrospect, that was probably a good thing. Because the way the course is laid out is so uh, fun of a layout. I tell people, I said, listen, in 18 holes, you'll never see the same thing twice. You know, even though a lot of the holes are the same length, a lot of them, they run in the same, you know, uh, directions, you'll get a wide variety of looks. You'll get a lot, a lot of different uh, shot selections. And from 150 yards out, you really won't see the same thing twice. And so as you meander through the, the land and meander through the, uh, the golf course, you're going to see a lot of different things, but it's all right there in front of you. One mm -hmm. of the things I always hated uh, from design aspect was all these hidden uh, creeks or forced carries and things like that. So I try to get away from that. 15, 16, because the wetlands crosses over, I had to build bridges across those little creek areas to, uh, for drainage situation. But overall, if you've never played the cat, you're going to see a golf course or play a golf course that gives you that that sensation that you're not you're not guessing where the holes are going, you're not guessing where the fairways are running. Uh, you just have to hit quality shots. Speaking from someone at a far lower skill level. Um, and and, and that represents most golfers in, in Michigan. There's something about uh, having your shot rewarded yes. sometimes, you know. And and there are some courses where yeah, you don't feel like you get rewarded. But once in a while, you get that shot where it really clicks and you feel it and it just the sound as it's leaving the club, it's like, that's going to work. Um, that's one of the things I've heard from friends of mine who, who played the polecat who say uh, that's that's one of the reasons I go back. Well, and that's good to hear. That's as a designer and somebody who, you know, has played so many different styles of golf courses, that's that's really, really good. Uh, what happens is out here is you really have to determine how long you want this golf course to play. It's not long in overall status from the black tee. It's only 980 yards, which is, you know, short in comparison to most bigger championship courses. Sure. But 
that plays that length. And then by going up to whether you go to the whites or the silvers, uh, the one thing that I'm more proud of than anything is the, the, the stuff I did, the words I catch from the ladies who play here, that it's mm -hmm. fair for them. Because mm -hmm. when we built this course in the early 90s, we started construction in 1990 and opened up in 92. The Golf Foundation, National Golf Foundation, really put in uh, to play the largest of people coming in was the female population into the mm -hmm. golf game. And so we really, I, I really concentrated on making sure that the ladies felt very comfortable playing this golf course and put tee boxes in some places where, you know, they have their own little area in behind mm -hmm. a pine tree in behind and, mm -hmm. and it really sets up nice for them. So, you know, again, I, I really feel like this golf course suits any style of play. And if you mm -hmm. want to be challenged and go back to the back tees, uh, we had a college uh, tournament here over the weekend, had a really good player out of Oakland University come in, played from the back tees without serious uh, whole location difficulty, shot a pair of 70s. And, you know, that's challenging, you know, uh, when you can reevaluate the golf course on not only length, but also whole location and make it play to a variety of skill levels. And that's what it is great to hear is that people come out. Yes, yeah. they're going to be challenged a little bit, but they're going to enjoy their experience. I, I wonder if some folks would have expected you to, to set it up long because you had a reputation for, for being, mm -hmm. you know, a long driver. And it's like, you know, not all of us fall into that category naturally. Well, um, that's, that's a good, that's good, Jim, that you picked up on that. The difference is you don't try to make a golf course something it isn't as far as adding length, adding tee boxes, because then you have to reevaluate the uh, bunker configurations, bunker positions. You know, all these older courses were built a long time ago to fit a certain distance and things. Bunkers were set up at about 267 to 275 on the dog legs. And now all these guys just blow them over them. So they're either adding tee boxes or putting other bunkers in. But really, from the, from the designer standpoint, it, it wouldn't have fit. It wouldn't have fit. The length wouldn't have fit here. Uh, it would have just added, you know, different feeling on where the trees were set. A hole like 16 is 485 yards, par 5. And people come off and say, that's the most hard one. You never play a shorter par 5. The way the green trees are positioned, the way the green is set into that back slope there, that's what makes a hole to me. It's not always just a, a, a long hole. And so that's, that's what I like to hear when people come in and they evaluate a hole based upon not so much how long it is, but how it really feels. Yeah, yeah, because that's that's the satisfaction. That's when you go back to the clubhouse afterwards, what are you talking about, you know? And, and it's, exactly. it's how it feels. It's not how it, nobody's counting the yards once you get back after the, after the round. You know, I've played 7,600-yard courses and, you know, 6,500-yard courses. I always found that, you know, the, the 65s were more position. They're more about quality shots rather than just hitting at eight miles and trying to go. So as a player, I loved all things. I played well at World Series of Golf down at Akron, a really long par 70 course. Mm -hmm. I also won Colonial, which is a shorter version of that, small greens, those type of things. So if you got game, you can pretty much make the adjustments, whether you get a nine iron or seven iron, uh, shouldn't be that big a thing uh, for mm -hmm. most people. But most people are geared now about, and when I'm teaching, what's the first thing they ask? How do I hit it further? I say, no, what you should think about is how you keep the dang thing in play, <laughs> you know, and how you wedge it, how you get the ball close to the hole when you need to, rather than just how hard you can swing. Well, that, that brings up something else. And I know you have a Facebook series um, on, on comparing, you know, how you swing and, and some of the current tour players and are, are things changing? A little bit, a little bit. They stay, they stack up into the left side a little bit more. They hit into a brace into the left side. They're creating power from a little bit different position than I did. Uh, a lot of that is the equipment. You know, mm -hmm. I played with a 43 and a quarter inch driver with a steel shaft and a wooden head and had to create that power and that speed through, you know, body motion. Now they're yeah. getting a lot more shaft angle, a lot more reaction out of the shaft. Now that doesn't mean that they swing it any harder than I did. And what I did with the, sing, uh, the swing series or sequence was it was a framing uh, of nine positions that I had done back in 1982. And so I thought that it would be kind of cool to compare where I was back then as the longest hitter on the tour mm -hmm. against all these young players that really create a lot of club head speed, but no more than I did. 
And so what we did is we positioned these John Rahm, uh, Tony Finau, uh, Brooks Kepka, Dustin Johnson, Justin Thomas, Rory McIlroy, and we got film of them in the same positions. And we showed people how you create power from different uh, you know, areas. Bottom line is when you really get into the middle section of their swing, it was all the same. It was just really? how it delivered from there. But the power positions were described by myself and Steve Robbins, who was my high school golf coach, and also Kelly Robbins' uh, dad that played the tour for a long time is another mm -hmm. great player out of Mount Pleasant. You know, and, and as a... We had fun with it. We were discussing what to do. Where to... Go ahead. I apologize, Dan. Uh, uh, the video broke up between us for just a moment. I may have missed the tail end of what you just said. Well, I'm just saying we just had fun with yeah. it, Jim, and we, we wanted to show people some of these positions that multiple good hard hitters got in, but that there's different ways to deliver the club to the ball. And okay. So it really was fun for me to look at these younger players who are comparable in their speed and all the things, but yet in their world hit it 40 yards further than I did on average when I had as much speed and as much and probably more control in my golf swing and made more power in my golf swing than they did. But where the equipment has changed a little bit, and then we're also adding into that some some tips out here on the golf course that I'm going to be bringing out. Uh, shots that you may have on the pole cat in two and three minute videos that are going to show little pitches, how to play certain shots that people can kind of say, okay, yeah, I just hit it over the green on number 17. Oh, I remember I was watching Dan Pohl hit this shot in a little video. Uh, maybe I'll try that. Can they pull it off? Maybe not, but it's going to give them a little <laughs> bit of variation how that goes. And then I also have something that will be coming out that's comparing my swing in 1982 to my own swing last fall. Uh -huh. So I took the same driver and hit shots with that 43 and a quarter inch 37 years later. And so what's, what we're trying to tell people is as you age, here's what you can potentially recognize and understand what happens in your golf swing. I don't turn my hips quite as much. I've had back surgery. I've had you know issues with some other physical things. So as I turn back, I'm not in the same load up position that can create those same power spots. So instead of swinging at 122 miles an hour, 125 back in my heyday, I could be in the one nine to one twelve or thirteen range. So ten miles an hour of clubhead speed is equivalent to almost 35 yards of distance. Wow. So when people say people say to me, gosh, I don't hit it as far. Well, no kidding. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. The harder you swing, the worse you get. So I'm looking at control. I'm just looking at, you know, how do I use what I have at 65 and, and, and maximize that efficiency, Jim? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, as a person, you know, getting older, or playing golf myself, you know, I, I – I understand your strategy does change, you know. Um, well, you, yeah, I thought you were 35 when I thought I first saw you, but I guess you're getting a little older than that. You know, my, yeah, uh, no. you know, gray in that mustache, so I can understand. See, you'll turn silver pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> I went right it's, from brown to silver. It's already there. We're just kind of hiding it for the occasion. But, uh, you know, uh, for people who haven't had there a chance to play the polecat yet, um, and obviously the, the opportunities for the end of this season are going to be few and far between based on mount nature. But, but if somebody wants to see the holes and, and see what they're getting into, because I know, I know I, I like the excitement of, of playing a new course and not knowing what's up ahead. I know I have friends who are just the opposite. It's like, no, I want to know everything I could possibly know. I want to know distance. I want to know, you know, hazards. If somebody wants to see the pole cap uh, from end to end, can they do that? Yes, again, uh, we actually took the time here in the springtime uh, in early summer to, to do a, a really what I felt was fairly unique because I went around and I played the holes from T. Uh, we brought it in behind me. I was describing where I was, how I, you know, how I felt like the design of this particular hole should work. Um, went through hole by hole, got kind of my impression of, uh, of what I was trying to accomplish out of it. Uh, you can go on our Facebook page. Uh, it's just, uh, what is it, polecat.net? Yep. Pol or 
Go look up the poll cat on our Facebook page. And if you go back and look at our videos, we have the 18 holes in 18 days series. And yeah. Dan describes each uh, hole. Yeah, we did that series based upon the entryway. I kind of did a, a, a wrote out a deal that describes when you come in, how you should feel like you get that northern Michigan feel right here in Mount Pleasant. Mm -hmm. And what the shop, what the Dan will be offered to everybody off the golf course wise. Great food here. I mean, excellent sandwiches, all those things. A mixture of drinks. Uh, Marissa and the girls have done an unbelievable job. They've created about 10 signature drinks that we come up with the caramel. Uh, caramel apple twist. We uh, have um, the apple pie. for. We have some fall themed drinks. So yeah. try and keep them seasonal. We're driving the old guy crazy. I can't drink it all anymore. <laughs> so, you know, it works that way. But when you play this golf course, like I said, you can go on our Facebook page. You can look and pop up hole number seven, get a descriptive, uh, you know, my description of it. Uh, great visuals, a lot of drone footage, a lot of, and not just from above. This was taking like 18 and driving down and flying that thing right like you're hitting the shot. And they'd follow nice. that golf ball out into the, you know, out into nowhere, basically. <laughs> And then I'd set back and describe the green site where you could miss how, you know, what I was kind of thinking. So it's, to me, it's a really uh, kind of uh, interactive type thing. You can kind of go on and really just pick out the hole that you want and say, you know, let's, let's take a peek at it. I can picture a lot of people after a round, you know, in the clubhouse and all of a sudden all their phones come out because they're going to pull up their video to show their friend. Yeah, this is where I got it right. And this is where I got it wrong. And that's well, that's, a great so idea. That's what, you know, if you can take the new, technology and really I, I i'm not a big fan of you know yardage yes how far you've got because in, at the golf course here it could be that you'd have 152 but you might have to carry it 147 to get the release you may want to carry it 155 and have it come back at you so if you under the yardage is not always to the pin but how far do i have to carry that bunker and it's 225 and uh, you you got to make a choice at that point so I think some of these people that just use it as how far do I have to the pin really don't know how far they hit it, number one, yeah. and how to use the slope of the green or the undulation of the green to their benefit. And once you start to play a golf course like this one a few different times, you'll understand that it's not where your great shots are, it's where your misses are. And if you can if you can move, then that's how I played Augusta. People yeah. asked me I was successful at Augusta because I had great distance control with my irons. And I could put the ball underneath holes and have – I always wasn't hitting at pins. I was hitting at how do I get it 20, 15, right. 18 feet below straight up hill butt. Because I tell you, I've, I told people of this, and they laugh at me, Jim. I said, I can put you at Augusta National 20 feet from the hole on every hole, and you wow. wouldn't break 90 <laughs> because you'd put it off the green. You'd put it in different places <laughs> because if you pin high, there's always so much slope you know, downhill side hills yeah. that you, the average person wouldn't have a clue how to put them. And you see like number 14 there, you could be playing 25 feet of break. Well, not many people <laughs> know how no. to play 25 feet of break. No, unless they're practicing on the roof of the garage or something. They're, exactly. Yeah, not yeah. That kind of stuff. Um, are you, are you doing coaching and, and, uh, and, and teaching as well? I do teach, uh, you know, I, I keep it, you know, with people I really feel like I can, you know, move forward. I'm working mm -hmm. with 13 year old kids that want to get better. Uh, one has never played leading up to I've worked with him twice. Uh, and he's excited about getting moving forward. Uh, I've worked with, with uh, all I've got some lady students, I've got the knowledge to help people. But really, where I feel like I could be the most benefit is for somebody who's wanting to move a little bit further that needs not mm -hmm. only my um, my knowledge of, of the game itself, but the course management, you know, where are you throwing away strokes and why, why are you doing it? Right. Uh, athletes that can make adjustments and feel like they can use some of their athletic knowledge to deliver the golf club to the ball correctly. Mm -hmm. And so you have to evaluate. I tell people, I said, if, I, if I'm going to help you, I have to evaluate you and be very, very honest on the direction that I think you can go. If sure. you don't want to fight into that, or, or don't want to move forward like that, then we might as well call it a day because uh, we're not going to be on the same page. Yeah, that's that's any coach in, in any sport. Exactly. You know, it's, golf, uh, more, golf more than anything because there's not that reactiveness and there's not that uh, movement. 
you're standing there and you're talking them through one and then they hit a couple shots and then you're talking again. It's, it's not like throwing a ball. It's not like hitting in a batting cage. It's not like hitting back and forth on a tennis you know, court. You right. have to hit a few, evaluate the, the, what it is, see if they're using their feet properly. I was fortunate. I tell people all the time, I was very fortunate to, to really play in an era where I got to talk to Byron Nelson and guys like that from the old school and every one yeah. of them, taught with the idea or talked about you build a great golf swing from the feet up and you don't hit at it, you hit through it. So you watch their footwork, you watch how their knees react, how their hips work. And then the upper part of the body eventually does what? It adapts to the speed and the motion of the lower part of the body. But if you're an upper part of the body swinger and you're moving a lot of action up above, you're going to struggle with this game because the ball, the club's going to be delivered to the ball inconsistently. So you got to get the Really it's amazing too. To move. A, a lot of times, um, even even a single simple tip uh, in, in the middle of a round, and I've had you know friends who are far better golfers than me. He's like Jim, you know, are are you, are you really squeezing that club as you're going through? And I'm like, mm, no. And and the next thing you know, I'm hitting five straight shots that go straight. And it's like, yeah, it, it's amazing when you've got somebody who has the knowledge that you have, has the experience, gets it from the mechanical end to the the thinking end and the concentration end. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. it requires a lot. Moving forward with all stuff. Memory and consistency in your swing mechanics is critical to having something yeah. that travels week to week. Yes, right. there's guys that I've played with that can get it for, you know, a, a couple of rounds or a short time. It's how you extend out and how you could take a month off, never swing a club and come back. And it's like you never left. Mm -hmm. That's when you know you have a, a swing that repeats itself. And if you know how to get those, you know, that out of yourself and build that foundation, then it's a lot easier to come back, take, like I said, take time off and, and not completely lose it. You know, I always laugh at some of these guys. Who go, oh, I haven't played for, you know, two weeks. <laughs> you know, you want to cry. So, you know, back in the day, guys, we, we quit our tour in October, usually the third week in October, and none of us played until January. Wow. Unless some funny thing. We took two weeks or two months off and just got away from it. And yeah. then you came back. But yeah. you hear these guys, oh, I haven't played and I haven't hit a ball. And you want to go, well, give me some wine. Give me some wine with those cheese. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy a lady, you know? But it, it's interesting how each person takes this game and extends it out to you know, what they're doing, good or bad. I'm sure one of the things that, that people are picking up on right now is that your love of the game hasn't waned in the least. I mean, your passion for the game is obvious. I actually think it's increased, to tell you really? the truth, because the playing side, you get very one-dimensional. You have to be very selfish. I mean, the, the game of golf as a professional, the high, high level, there can't be anybody else in that little circle with you that, mm -hmm. that lets your mind go. You have to, like I said, you have to be selfish, and you have to be able to separate yourself when, you're, when your mind is really needs to be. I've had guys tell me, you know, that they came up to me at the fifth hole and said hello at something. And I wouldn't even remember because I'm, you know, I'm kind of focused yeah. on oh, yeah. bad, <laughs> you know, or yeah. I said, well, get the heck out of here. You're my, you know, I'm a cousin of an aunt's uncle, uh, fourth removed. And you're like, <laughs> okay, get, the, get out of here. <laughs> but, but now it's such a different feeling that I don't have to worry about the pressures of everyday play. Yeah. I've got great people that I work with. Mm -hmm. Dean Payson's here at the Polecat, Marissa, all of our staff is just fantastic. It's something I look forward to coming in too. And then most of the time you will see me at some point during the day, unless I've got something critical <laughs> going on, I roll around here and ask, asking, you know, answering questions. People see me and I have people come in, hey, is Dan Pohl ever around here? And what do the girls say? Well, he might be out back <laughs> doing this or, you know, you know, wait a second and you'll be here. And, and that's what we have now is this place has grown – uh, you know, to a point where we, we need to keep the level going up. I yeah. want people to understand that we're not going to stand pat. we got ownership that is right behind us, that, that feels our same passion. Now, nobody's ever going to have the passion for this golf course that I do. None. Mm -hmm. you can't. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, you know, I, I moved all, I was here for all the dirt moving. I did the, all the greens. I, I was on machines. Uh, you know, I redid some of the uh, the 17th hole, uh, you know, sod cut. I did everything here <laughs> recently. That's probably why I have to have surgery tomorrow. <laughs> oh, oh my. But, but I love it. I love the fact that something that you put into something is noticeable. 
by people. Our members are just loving the, you know, coming out here. Uh, they they feel the comfortableness that we have here. Mm -hmm. We get great people like Marissa, who's Central Michigan athlete. We've got four or five of the girls from the hockey, field we'll hockey, to basketball. track, to basketball that wow. are out here. So our connection to the community is huge. And to me, it's been just a, a fun coming back and being involved. And I hope people, sometimes I get, I get too riled up because I want to <laughs> see things, you know, at yeah. the best. And if I go out and play, people say, well, why don't you play at the course very much? Because I wouldn't enjoy it. <laughs> I'd be looking if it's nine things that are really good and one that's bad, I'm going to want the, you know, that one to be addressed. Sure. Yeah. I play, I'm always looking at, you know, is 17 playing the way I want to is 14. What's what happened to the, you know, the bunker on 12, what, you know, and I can be a pain in the butt is what I can be. <laughs> Anyone who's ever run their own business and has that level of passion knows exactly what you're talking about. And, but I bet they're still jealous that you get to have that passion about a golf course and, and theirs is, you know, manufacturing widgets or something. Can we get Marissa in here a little bit? Because you yeah. know what? I, I want to find uh, I, I out more about the, uh, you know, the other amenities, the, the you know, because um, obviously a golf experience. Yeah, it's it's the course, but it's also what um, what comes after. You know, what comes uh, in the evenings. Uh, I know there's a lot of uh, other things going on there, Marissa. Um, can you tell me a little bit about um, what's offered at the Polecat in terms of uh, you know dining, uh, conventions, banquets? What kind of things do you, do you offer? Yeah, so we have like four main um, event, premier event spaces. So in the pictures that are kind of going through a lot of them, when you see the white high ceilings, that's our new event center. Um, mm -hmm. And so we can do anything to business meetings, to um, basically anything you can think of, Christmas parties, anything that you can think of, that that's what we have there. Um, the one that just popped up there was our ceremony space, which is right before um, the tea box on one. And so you can get married right there. We have a little river that kind of goes um, through. We have a little archway and everything. And that's, that's where we have all of our couples get married. Um, we also were just recently in the last um, couple of years, we just got a tent, which is coming very helpful for this um, oh, COVID yeah. So yeah. we've done, yeah, definitely. We never knew, we never knew how much it would get used until this year. So we've done some graduation parties out there up to everything, up to having weddings out there. So we definitely have a lot of spaces. We can fit um, up to 300 people in our event center and we have um, the tent. We can fit, you know, 150, 200 people very comfortably. Um, we have picnic tables that spread out around, around it. So it's just a lot of different spaces that we can use. Um, we have our restaurant. Oh, nine to five right now in the fall usually um nine to nine during the premier golf hours and so golfers come in all the time we have big groups they come in and eat um we can do steak dinners you know we'll have 40 guys come out and do a, a round of golf and they'll come in and have it all set up before and we'll cook them all steak and they'll they'll eat out here on the veranda and, you know watch people come up 18 probably making fun of some of them and um you know eating their steaks and stuff but um, we do everything up to, you know, bridal showers, baby showers. So definitely if you want to have an event here, we can definitely make it work. So. Well, and Jim, just to follow up, great, great description of what we've got. This veranda sits down, looks at the Chippewa River and the uh, the 18th hole coming up here. Uh, if you want a good sandwich, and I'm a big cheeseburger guy, <laughs> but if you oh, like yeah. cheeseburgers with good fries and stuff, we've got a menu that I think is underestimated, you know, along, you know, most people won't come out for lunch, but if you just want to come out as a business person or mm -hmm. have a nice this brand is perfect for it mm -hmm. because it sets you up in a very uh, casual situation, good food, you know, uh, to me, it's, it's underrated and underused mm -hmm. because people don't know enough about it. And when mm -hmm. you get good sandwiches and you get good different varieties of beers and varieties of, uh, drink opportunities, uh, along with great service. I give that's one of the things that both Dean and I and all of us that mm -hmm. from the upper side of it have always wanted is the best service and the best people that are personable uh, gals. You notice, you can see with Marissa. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's a senior in, in college and she acts like you know she's 35 or 40 <laughs> and in the business world yeah. most of the time. Most yeah. of the time. But but that's what we have here is quality. One of the things we're always told is that this is the best group of people that they've dealt with in the, in the golf side of it. Now, there are certain areas that you'll go to that 
that are like that. But all of our staff recognize what they're here for, and that's good service mm -hmm. and to show people a great experience, whether they play good or play bad. Um, mm -hmm. You know, hopefully they just enjoy the experience. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be a great day, period. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly right. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, if uh, Marissa, if somebody uh, is thinking about weddings, golf outings, I know we mentioned, uh, we, well, we didn't mention during this, but even beforehand, I guess people come out there for everything from uh, uh, engagements, baby reveals. Oh, yes, we've <laughs> I mean, had it all. Yeah. We have had it all. So if you just, yeah, you can either on our website directly, we have um, information you can fill out that gives you um, information about, it will send an email to me and I'll get back to you about setting up an event. Or you can just call the pro shop, which is the number that's scrolling on the screen right there. Okay. And if you just ask for Marissa or ask for the event coordinator, um, I will give you a call back and you can either set up a time for you to come check out our spaces and, and look through all of them or if you know exactly what you want and you just want to call and set it up we can we can take care of it right there on the phone so perfect perfect um for the uh, for the website and and for uh your facebook page i know dan we've talked about you know being able to see all the golf holes are there also videos that show the facilities for for banquets and the like Yep, yep, we do. We don't have as many, but yes, we're we're putting those out there, um, trying to get that the word out about Christmas parties. We're still planning on on booking some of those and just kind of seeing what happens when we get closer to December. But you know, mm -hmm. we're hopeful here. So, well, and you have space, so yeah, the whole area is, is, is really taken but, on with the with yeah. the pole. Yeah, awesome. Well, the this is down great. now. We usually take it down in October. Okay. Okay. Very good. This has been great. I have to say, is there anything else I didn't cover that, uh, that you wanted to get in? Cause I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not missing something because I've gotten a, an awful well, lot of information from you. We didn't get a chance to specifically talk about your golf game. So I guess that's for a later date <laughs> wow. and maybe a longer version, but, uh, no, I, I just have don't, to, I just I would have to take to lessons right. just to, to feel confident enough to take a lesson from you, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to let people know that, you know, there's there's places that they call bucket lists and all these places, mm -hmm. but when people come in here and they're, they're all across the board, they will compare this to any upper level public public facility in the state of Michigan. And all we've got people that are rave about that might be the best course they've played. Now mm -hmm. that is, is individual thought process sure. on you know what what they're comparing it to but um, in the central part of the state of michigan with the whole mount pleasant area and i tell people i said listen you come to mount pleasant you still have bucks run riverwood you got eagle glen to farwell you've got a great mix of of golf courses to play why come anywhere else to you know you don't have to go up to harbor you know to harbor springs or mm -hmm. you know the treetops to get great golf courses Book your things through, you know, the Doherty Hotel or the casino here, you know, these packages and, and see for yourself. Mount Pleasant in this whole area has great things to offer uh, the golf community. Absolutely. No question about it. No yeah. question about it. Well, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Uh, Dan Pohl, uh, now I can tell all my golf buddies, I got to chat with Dan Pohl. <laughs> so well, I appreciate round, it, Jim. Next round Good of drinks job. is on them. Yeah. Just So I appreciate that. And uh, Marissa... Great job. Marissa I mean, uh, saying, just real quick, Marissa, I'm saying we were saying that you really have a, a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Great voice. Love the voice, man. That's perfect. Love it. See, I, I got into this business long before we knew we we're going to be doing this video thing. Otherwise, I would have <laughs> been an accountant or something, probably. Great stuff. Great stuff, Jim. We appreciate you doing it. You bet. Thanks so much, Marissa. Thanks so much, Dan. And if you need to know more about the poll cap, all the information is right there on the screen. Uh, Facebook website, the phone number is there. Uh, there's always someone who is going to be very happy to talk to you, whether it's Marissa or anybody else in the staff. And uh, and, and consider that with Christmas parties coming up. Uh, I know there's probably going to be a lot of people trying to catch up on weddings that were missed yeah. this year, come next year. So you might want to get in there and get that information book quickly. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it, it might be a very, very busy year for you. So you'll, yeah. you'll want to get a hold of the-, the We hope so. <laughs> we're ready for it. Yeah, and we're all looking forward to the an interesting new year in 2021, I'm sure. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, you, you guys back. have a great day. Thank you so much. And I uh, hope we get to see you again soon. You got it. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. You bet.